kind of like discussion questions. But the, so the term soft arts is trying to, um, what we would call hard arts would be what you want on an issue and how many people you turned out and how strong your action meetings were. That would be, that's the framework of how he's using the metaphor of hard arts. Soft arts would be things like how well, when you're doing individual meetings, sitting down with people, how well did you listen deeply? How well did you achieve empathy in terms of how you listen to people? Um, he used the term thoughtfulness, which could include how do you set up a meeting? Do you have refreshments? Are you, in, if someone's newer to the, to the organization, how intentional are you to help them understand what's going on and to debrief with them? All these kind of things about um, um, making people feel welcome and comfortable so they can participate. And also thinking about ritual. Um, what are rituals? Do we have an annual dinner? Um, in, in our groups, one of the things that we, we struggle with, but I really believe in, is um, in faith-based organizing, there's a big focus on what are called one-to-one -one individual meetings. Um, and um, one organizer, one very um, thoughtful and provocative organizer, his group, um, a, a regular one-to-one -one meeting is a ha at least a half an hour, 30 to 45 minutes. Um, this organizer in his local, whenever they have a, a planning meeting, a strategy meeting in his organization in Portland, they would do a half an hour meeting at it. And then they'd have maybe an hour, you know, regular strategy meeting. But they'd spend a whole hour, they would break up in twos and uh, leaders would sit down and really get to know each other in that kind of way every single time. And that's really challenging to think about, can we really spend that time? The most we've done, and we don't always live up to it, but it's something I really believe in and push with our organizers is we try to do 10 minutes in every meeting where we take a question. Sometimes it's a relational question about, um, you know, um, asking people to reflect and share a story. Sometimes it might relate to the topic of the meeting tonight, but it's really to, to break up and go in a corner and have that conversation. It really creates an incredible amount of energy um, when, when you see people doing that rather than the table where one person is saying something and some people are responding, it's, it's everybody's talking. It also breaks the ice of um, right at the beginning of the meeting, everyone is talking. And so it also kind of breaks the ice of people feeling, I think, more comfortable in talking in the strategy part of the meeting. Um, so that would be an example of a ritual when you can employ <coughs> that as part of our meetings. In, in our meetings, we, faith, a faith reflection might be a ritual. Um, a opening or closing prayer, prayer, but you can think of things like that. So, I would, um, I would, you know, it's something I would, uh, I would look at, and um, it's almost there. Also, it's almost like a checklist of, within the article of things that, and you'll see. Oh, I do this already. Oh, why couldn't I do this? Um, and it's something that I try to read every three or four months and just say, so what, so, um, so look at my work and what am I doing, what am I practicing of the, especially the thoughtfulness mm -hmm. frame of the article and what am I not doing and, and could do. Um, so it's one of my, in some ways it's ironic that I call it my favorite article and it's not about. And of course it's from Social Policy magazine. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> It all goes. It all, a lot of it all goes back to Wade. If you no, no, we, just, <laughs> we weren't entertained it then. I'm just so proud that it was there right, in social right. policy. Right, but it's a little bit ironic because you know, as organizers, we you know identify what did we win, how many people we turned out. Right. But in a certain kind of way, this is still my favorite article because it's about the you know the image of unions when they first started in the country in the 30, even before the 30s, but there was a phrase from cradle to grave. We want to, but people want to be part of people's lives, all parts of their lives, doing right. something about their community life when and their kids, and we want to be stand with them when they're retired. And so it's sort of like it's part of that sort of image of that's what the thoughtfulness part is. So that's in there. There's an article by uh, an organizer named Marshall Gans, who's a, a very yeah, you know, and it's about he has a framework about story and narrative. So it's an article. <coughs> that he wrote, and he's a very important organizer, um, you know, who's influenced a lot of people um, going forward from his original civil rights work to a lot of work he's doing um, to train organizers. He's based here in Boston, and he teaches at Harvard, um, of all places, but he's also brought forward a lot of people into organizing, um, including the, the national field director of 
the Obama campaign, you know, was someone who took Marshall's course in college and did an internship with our organization, and he was the national field director of Obama's campaign, but also less um, powerful people have also gone through that. And then this this framework I said about the um, the 30, you know, what happened from World War II to, to today, it was sort of a summary of a training notes from that, so that's what's in the things I yeah, passed out. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Um, we know how to read. Package. <laughs> Package, hey. yeah. Training. Right. Um, are you about to recommend a book as well? <laughs> no, I was going to talk to you about that because you're. This is Eastern Europe. Oh, good, good. good. The, mag the magic lantern about the, the the movements to overthrow communism and ah, all those. And different you know, I've heard, I've never read this book, but I've heard of this author. Yeah. Okay, good. This, you want to talk about dissonance in Soledad when when the the. Um, the shipyard workers were in were in Gdansk, and it's 19, uh, what, 1981, okay, they're on strike, they're in the shipyard, is the military going to throw them out, the whole world is watching, and they're in the shipyard, and this author, an English author named Timothy Garton Ash, is there as a journalist covering them, and they get this phone call, and they said, you take the phone call, it's someone who's speaking English, and he's this progressive <laughs> Englishman journalist, and on the phone is Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> not, not who you he have wants to be able to appreciate irony. Not who he wants to talk to, but he had to translate a message from Margaret Thatcher to the Polish workers. Of course, <laughs> Margaret Thatcher cared nothing about English workers, like Ronald Reagan, but because of the context of right. communism, Cold all War, that. Right. But she was all of a sudden right. at the barricades. Huh? Right. <laughs> the, the right, the right thing can happen for the wrong reasons. As, and that's as when you're history. tempted not to give the. Give a translation in extra span as we do in Ecuador, huh? Right. <laughs> right. Yes. I would. In Korea, I, you know, when, whenever I've spoken over there, I, I, you know, you'll say these short sentences like, you know, not as bad as my name is Wade Rathke, I'm chief organizer of Baker International. All of a sudden, they'll talk for five minutes. And, you know, you, eventually you've said three or four things and you feel like they've translated for a half hour and you hope that they did, you know, whatever they did, let's go. That's right. That's right. <laughs> language. <laughs> so right. we have uh, something, I think.